for a reception by His Excellency Mr. George Mane Weir, President of the Republic of Liberia, in honor of Her Excellency Ms. Amina J. Mohammed, Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, on the occasion of the closure and exit of the United Nations mission in Liberia, an investiture ceremony, Executive Pavilion, Ashman Street, Monrovia, Liberia. We'll invite the Reverend M. Emmanuel Nimley, religious advisor to the President, for the invocation. Father, we bless you for such a time like this in your presence. We thank you, Father, for your grace. We bless you for the men and women that left that nation and came and joined us, Lord, to give us such a peace we have in our town, in our nation, in the name of Jesus. For those who couldn't make it to reach this far, that fall along the way, oh God, may their soul rest in perfect peace, in the name of Jesus. For those who are on the way back home, Father, we say we are grateful for the life in the name of Jesus. I commit this program in your able hands, Lord. Take control and let your name be glorified in Jesus' name, I pray. Armed forces of Liberia Band to give us a selection.
remembered. Above all, the dedication of your service to the progress of Liberia has won for you a special place and recognition in the hearts of Liberians. Now, therefore, the Republic of Liberia, by virtue of the authority in me vested as Grand Master of the Orders of Distinction of the Republic, do hereby admit you, Farid Zarif, Special Representative of the Secretary General of the United Nations, into the Order of the Star of Africa, and confer upon you the green of Grand Bank. This is with pride and dignity to the glory of God. Accept my congratulations. <laughs> You may have your seats. It is also my pleasure to invite our friend, the Ambassador Olof Skook, Permanent Representative of the Kingdom of Sweden to the United Nations and Chair of Liberia Peace Building Configuration. Citation by His Excellency George Malen Wea, President of the Republic of Liberia and Grand Master of the Orders of Distinction of the Republic of Liberia for the conferral of Grand Band into the Order of the Star of Africa upon Ambassador Olof Skook, Permanent Representative of the Kingdom of Sweden to the United Nations and Chair of the Liberia Peace Building Configuration, March 22, 2018. Astute diplomat, humanitarian, and distinguished public servant of the Kingdom of Sweden. You were born in Lund, Sweden, and are married to Ambassador Johanna Brisker, a union blessed with three children. You obtained your tertiary education at Raoul Wallenberg Institute for International Law Scholarship for Advanced Studies at the European Community Commission of Human Rights, Strasbourg, France, and obtained a degree in 1987. You later enrolled at the Lund University Institute of Law and were awarded a Master of Law in 1988. Thereafter, you entered a diplomatic training course at the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Sweden in 1989. As an experienced diplomat with vast knowledge in both bilateral and multilateral negotiations focusing on peace and security, as well as of broader bilateral agendas, you have occupied many outstanding portfolios, including Director General for Political Affairs of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Sweden and represented Sweden in the United Nations, the European Union, and the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. You've represented Sweden as ambassador to many countries, including Colombia, Venezuela, Ecuador, and Panama. Whilst in Colombia, you played an active part in the peace negotiations. 
you served as executive assistant to Dr. Hans Blake as part of the UN efforts aimed at verifying weapons of mass destruction programs in Iraq. In 2010, you were appointed by the EU High Representative to serve as first permanent chair of the EU Political and Security Committee. Your leadership at PSC was instrumental in collaborating, elaborating the EU strategy and action plan on human rights adopted in June 2012, as well as giving strategic guidance to EU missions. Your tactful diplomatic disposition inspired your appointment as EU ambassador to several countries in the Southeast Asian region, region including Indonesia, Brunei, Jerusalem, as well as ASEAN from 2013 to 2015. Later in 2015, you returned to direct service of your native Sweden and served as permanent representative of Sweden to the United Nations in New York, where you remained currently. Since 2015, you assumed the chairmanship of the Peace Building Commission Configuration for Liberia, the PCCL, during your tenure as chair of the PCCL, you worked assiduously in advocating for resource for peace building and political accomplishment for Liberia. These efforts were directed to supporting particular areas that promote the security sector development, rule of law, national reconciliation, human rights, and peaceful elections in 2017. You are also credited with playing a key role in setting up the Liberia multi Partners Trust Fund that will serve as a medium for channeling resources to Liberia. You have contributed significantly in promoting the five pillars of development in Liberia, leading to the creation of an environment of peace and security, socioeconomic viability of the country, and the culture of democracy in Liberia. You will be credited for your contribution to the consolidation of peace, security, stability, and democracy in Liberia. Your interest in the well-being of Liberia and the dedication of your service to its development and progress has won you a special recognition and has endeared you to the Liberian people. Now, therefore, in consideration of your enormous contribution to the service of the Liberian state, I, George Manin Weir, President of the Republic of Liberia, by virtue of the authority in me vested as Grand Master of the Orders of Distinction of the Republic, do hereby admit you, Ambassador Olof Stuhl, Permanent Representative of the Kingdom of Sweden to the United Nations, and Chair of Liberia Peace Building Commission configuration into the order of the Star of Africa and confer upon you the grade of Grand Banner. <laughs> Wear this insignia with pride and dignity to the glory of God. Accept my congratulations.
Mr. President, it is a unique honor and pleasure for me as the Special Representative of the Secretary General and Head of the United Nations Mission Liberia to have been identified as the recipient of Liberia's highest state reward. I must make it clear that I understand that this honor is bestowed upon me as representative of the proud organization of the United Nations to the work of which in Liberia every woman and man who has served this country ever since the establishment of the mission back in 2003 is awarded the privilege and honor of this medal. Allow me, Mr. President, to turn the table. The honor belongs to the people of Liberia. The honor belongs to the political community of Liberia. It is they who delivered the success story. It is they who demonstrated to the world they have taken the right lessons from their bitter recent history. In that, it is they who showed a strong determination that they are not going to repeat the mistakes of the past. In this, it is they who wrote this very proud chapter of their history. Mr. President, I've watched you throughout very hectic days of the political campaign and listened to your messages, as I did also the messages of other contenders on the seat. Together, you all created a totally new atmosphere, a new code of behavior in the context of your democratic experiment during the recent elections. Not to be, not to be did you together manage to prevent any form of violent physical violence. You also demonstrated that even in your public discourse, there was no element of oral violence happened. This was the example. Given the background of the Liberian conflicts, given the examples of elections in Africa, this was a unique performance of its own class. And I would like to bow to you, to the people of Liberia and its political leaders for having come up with this absolutely outstanding, unique performance. Thank you very much for that. I must also recognize the role played by the institutions of the idea. First and foremost, the National Elections Commission, who rose to the challenge and performed at the best of their professional ability. We are also grateful for the wisdom that the Supreme Court of Liberia provided whenever there was a dispute over the interpretation of the Constitution and the laws of Liberia. We are also grateful to the legislators, representatives of the people of Liberia, who were there always to express their opinion and help with the resolution of those issues. We are also grateful to the many civil society organizations, both issue-based and faith-based organizations who are there at the forefront of the efforts to make sure that we do not allow issues to become problems and problems to be developed into violence. But almost is the people of Liberia to whom we are grateful for this success. This success stands on the foundation of a long series of other successful efforts in the past. The life of the United Nations 
in Liberia, our homeland in Liberia, has been quoted to us for the time of the administration of Madame Mary Johnson Sadiq. I would be remiss if I did not mention the contribution that there is. Madame Sadiq and members of her government made in providing a conducive and helpful atmosphere for the successful conduct of the elections. We were given the space and opportunity to work with you, with all of you, and to bring to the table whatever added value we have to make sure that we put some wind into the sail of the Liberians in their quest for achieving this high ground of accomplishment. I accept this honor in the name of the United Nations Secretary, in the name of the organization, and in the name of every man and woman, both in uniform and civilians who have served in London. And I'm proud of it, and I'm proud of the accompaniment, the solidarity and cooperation that existed between this mission and the the government of Liberia, all its institutions, and the people of Liberia. Let me also mention that had it not been for the generous and willing contribution of the many friends of Liberia, the donors and other international counterparts, we would not have been able to achieve these successes. I thank them also for that support that they have given to Unman, and the support they have given to the government of Liberia institutions. To all, I bow with respect and with gratitude on behalf of all of us, all of us in the United Nations, particularly in Unmet. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Mr. President, Deputy Secretary General Amina Mohammed, all the honorable guests at the head table, ladies and gentlemen, Liberians, friends of Liberia, it's an enormous honor to have been receiving this honor uh, this evening. I uh, first came to Liberia in 1997, when uh, your neighbor, Sierra Leone, was going through an immensely tough time. And in my visit, I could see the fears and the tension in the streets and in the eyes of many Liberians. Um, you had then in front of you a terrible, terrible war. I've been back during the Ebola times, and I've tried to come back every year since. My humble media school contribution to Liberia is, I think, that I've tried to be a friend of Liberia. And I tried in New York uh, with the Peace Building Commission to bring together other friends of Liberia. My simple motto has been, let's talk to Liberia and to the Liberians, not just about Liberia and Liberians. <laughs> Mr. President, dear friends, I want to dedicate this fantastic honor to the youth, to the young people of Liberia who I've met at every instance. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're at the eve of the uh, Liberia moment. I am absolutely convinced that this is going to be a very good moment for Liberia. Thank you very much. <laughs> and let's um, drink, have a toast for peace, health and prosperity for the people of Liberia, for the government of Liberia and for the president of Liberia.
colleagues and staff. This is a journey of the solidarity. It's a journey which is ending with a successful closure of a peacekeeping mission. And this has been only possible because people, men and women, from all over the world, from different continents, from this continent, have joined hands, have come with the spirit of serving and serving peace in Liberia. And in this context, I think it is a good sign to have been recognized through the SRLG Farid Zarif and also the partnership with His Excellency Olof. Because without the partnership, we will not be here today. And also, without the friendship, the brotherhood, the sisterhood, we will not be here today. So I want really to acknowledge and say to each one of you in this room, but also to the enormous thousands of people out there, including those who have left us, that today it is their celebration of peace, stability in Liberia. It is also the celebration of something which is about the Mano River Union, and I'm coming from the Mano River Union basin, so I'm proud to be here with brothers and sisters who have come a long way from trauma and still have to battle to make sure that the trauma is not going to run them down, because today I also heard about reconciliation and making sure that the family stay united. And from the United Nations, we can only tell you that we will be accompanying you. One chapter is closing, and I think we should do this to everyone in the context of greeting them and saying, your sacrifice has been worse because today we can open a new era and a new path for sustainability, for development, and for reconciliation again, and I insist on this one, because it's only from the heart and the mind that brothers and sisters can coexist. And from the coexistence, they can build a nation. From a nation, they can build what we call the future and the present of the youth of Liberia. So to the youth of Liberia, be patient. Everything is one step at a time. Because you have a leadership who is committed. And we continue with the solidarity and the partnership of everyone in this room and out of this room. And the Department of Peacekeeping Operation will ensure that we will have our voice added to all others to make sure that Liberia stays on the map and the attention of each and every one. We will now invite uh, the Minister of Internal Affairs and his team who will be gowning some special guests and giving them names of chiefs of Liberia. So, uh, the Minister of Internal Affairs, we welcome you to the floor. Thank you. We'll be honoring two Ghana ceremony tonight, five of our special guests. We honor Our Excellency Amina Mohammed, Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations. <laughs> we will also honor 
been to Keta, Assistant Secretary General of the United Nations for Peacekeeping. <laughs> we honor Paris Zari, Special Representative of the Secretary General of the United Nations. <laughs> we honor Yakub El Hilo, my brother, here's our enemy. Yes. And of course, what I pray, a very good friend of ours as well. May I now invite Chief Zansan Kawa to please come forward and the head of the Governors Association and Tado Jala to please come. Oh, okay. Thank you. We will start with for Excellency Amina Mohab, please come forward. We will read why this name has been necessitated to be given to you. Your name shall be Noah Noah Limu. Noah Limu was a paramount chief in Fong County. She was elected in 1975. Noah Limo promoted the participation of women in decision making. Despite the fact that she herself was not schooled, but she encouraged her citizens to send the children to school. She helped providing opportunity for women, and she stood for women. She built schools, she built clinics and roads, connected communities. She was opportune to travel with the late President William R. Torbo Jr. to Virginia, USA to promote participation of women in governance. She served as a role model for peace and reconciliation in her kingdom in Bonn County, the central region of our country, and continue to be remembered today. She's a hero and she continue to be remembered today in Bonn County. Please accept our congratulations. Yes, sir. Yes. We will call this Sister Bindu Keita. For today, in addition to your peacekeeping work, you shall carry a library name. That name is Honorable Carl Gibson, Farmer Chief, Magidi, Grand of Magidi County. The late Farmer Chief, Carl Gibson, was a female chief in Takata Chief Down, Magidi County. She was elected by her people in 1997. She serves as Paramount Chief for 25 years. When in Magibi County, when Magibi County was a Gibi territory on Bon County, Honorable Gibson retired as a work with her citizens, male chief counterpart, a prominent citizen to in helping to make Magibi as a county. During the administration of the late Parliament of the late President Samuel Kanyato, Magibi was made a county tool for ingenuity in 1984. Based on Chief Gibson's friendly working relationship with citizens of Magibi, she was elected Paramount Chief in 1997. As I said, she played a major role in advocating for the rights of women in that district. Chief Gaffin also participated along with other women in governance and in helping to, to give voice for Liberian women in the governance of our country. Chief Gaffin was a great woman and up to date she's been celebrated in Magibi as one of the greatest chiefs. So please have a step out. Paris 
sorry. Yes, let me Yes, let us say. We are going to name you with a name of one of our greatest paramount chief from Nimba County. The name is Kawin Swazama. The late paramount chief Kawin Swazama was elected as paramount chief by his citizens in 1940. I know it's honor the associate Justin Jarlin is very pleased with his name. He was instrumental in ending trouble war in his control areas. He serves as speaker for his people in Zoga Chiefdom, where he advocated for recognition by the government, then called the central government. At the time, Nema was being referred to as the Western Province. In 1964, Chief Transaman joined other prominent citizens of Nema in a quest to grant county status to Nema County, Lofa, Bong, and Grand Jida within the Republic of Liberia. Honor his good leadership, Zoga was administratively and politically divided into two chiefdoms, namely Nimkwi and Buyao chiefdoms. Chief Trasaman met his death in 1969 in New Bar City, Nema County. During his administration, he promoted education, he improved health services in the district in Buyao and Zoga chiefdom and help in uniting his people. He is remembered today as one of Liberia's greatest paramount chief, and you have worked for us in this country, Excellency. You worked tirelessly, especially so during the war. We remember that, and we will always remember you. We congratulate you. We are proud of you. Thank you. name you show me a paramount chief for where we chief down wherever chief comes to today Webo is a Webo, this Webo paramount chief was a focus question between the interior of rural Maryland and the postal administration in Apple City Whenever there was gathering, this team was so kind. He lodged other chiefs when it comes to helping to promote peace among the running of the, the Western province at the time. He was a wise and influential man. He encouraged the establishment of a district school that provided education for children from Webo and other surrounding towns. The school is currently serving today as a training institute for teachers in the southeastern region. Chief Chiumi also promoted peace among the tribes of the interior during the years of war, travel war that is. He was recognized as peace ambassador in the Webo district. Chief Chairman 
also taken away by death in 1962. Today, in our southeastern part of Nigeria, is recognized as a hero. And we are hope, working with you to open all county service centers from Montenegro to the farmers to Wanyama, traveling with me to help our government provide services to our people that are being the sole cause of conflict in our country. We are proud of you. And I pray that you're going to remain here as an ROC, resident coordinator that is, we shall even do more. So stand back for more links to come for you. Thank you. <laughs> In addition to the name that you recall there, by your family now we are Chief Bana Boba. <laughs> the late Chief Bana Boba was elected as a second paramount chief for Toji district, now Toji Sajjah district, by citizens of that district in 1950. He served his people from 1950 to 1962. He fought for them when Fire Soon came to start Fire Soon in, 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 in our region. He told President Barclay, Edwin Barclay, that the land spoken about to be given to Fire Soon told him. Is not part because we are not agreed to give them to fire school. If citizens honor my leadership, have to agree. And President Bartley told him, You are right. And that land was stolen. So he was a strong chief. Additionally, despite being a native and farmer, Chief Goga was also interested in education. He provided land to the church for the building of the school today called Jody Mission. That school has educated many librarians. Paramount Panam Boba initiated the construction of roads to connect several towns leading from Toli Junction to Kakata uh, and to Uba Town near the war mines. He helped to stabilize the district by promoting peace, unifying his people, and providing assistance to the less fortunate. Based on Paramount Chief Boba, many humanitarian work and development program, you were asked by the citizens to represent them in the national legislature as member of the House of Representatives in 1962. Chief Boba was instrumental for, create, for the creation of to the Sagittarius District. He is being remembered today in Mosurado County to the as one of our greatest. And that man, when he came to the justice bill of our government, and worked tirelessly for the judiciary and the Ministry of Justice when we were in the process of the, the, the police recruitment and equipping the police to help serve our people and protect them from what we do. It is in our means that we consider that we form you and turn you to that. We are proud of you and congratulations. Thank you. That concludes our county ceremony here tonight, Your Excellency. Thank you for the opportunity giving the Minister of the and Affairs to form part of this national and great occasion. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. President, and our distinguished members of the government for being here today and honoring us as we mark the closure of the United Nations mission in Liberia, UNMEL. This ceremony really is a wonderful demonstration of the Liberian government's success, but the strong relationship with UNMEL, its leadership, and the leaders that we have had here today, our personnel, so we thank you deeply. But I also thank you for naming me after a woman of substance in Liberia. There is nothing prouder than that, than to receive that honor. Um, particularly as I look at the, lip, uh, the, the number of things that she has achieved. Um, Noir Rene. I would like to just ask you, Mr. President, to just bear with me. I thought I know I said a few remarks, but I would not be from the UN if I didn't read a long speech. Um, but this speech is important. There are many things that have been said today, and it is bittersweet, because here we are closing down the mission, and there are many relationships that will end. We hope they will continue in the future, as we are always family. But we know that the sweet is that we are transitioning, transitioning to continue to build um, a prosperous Liberia under the leadership of President George Weir. So bear with me. Today we celebrate and we know that Liberia has made enormous progress over the past 15 years. In 2003, when UNMO was created, Liberia was torn apart by conflict with a traumatized population and no hope for its young people, especially our women and girls. Public services were in free fall, the country's infrastructure was in ruins, the economy was destroyed, and the National Police and Army had disintegrated. We may never know the full human cost of more than 14 years of successive brutal civil war, but we do know that more than a quarter of a million Liberians were killed, nearly a third of the population was displaced, and an estimated 80% of women and girls experienced conflict-related sexual violence. It is important to remember and to recognize the suffering of the Liberian people and the devastation and destabilization that conflict brought to the entire region in order to appreciate Liberia's long path to peace. I would specifically like to recognize the important role that Liberian women played in pursuing that peace. Women have borne most of that burden. They have stepped up at every stage, providing leadership, courage, and integrity. And they have done this with dignity. The United Nations mission in Liberia has supported the efforts of Liberians in restoring their country and building sustainable peace. I thank all the special representatives and the civilian and military personnel who played a part in UNMIL's success. And I commend the countries that contributed troops and police, in particular the women peacekeepers and police who served. I also pay deep special tribute to the 202 peacekeepers who lost their lives in pursuit of peace in, Ni in Liberia. Today, we remember their sacrifice, but even so, even more so, we remember their families. As UNMIL closes, we can all feel proud of its accomplishments. It has fulfilled its mandate with distinction and leaves behind a country that has great potential for lasting peace and stability. UNMIL has helped to disarm more than 100,000 combatants and protected millions of civilians, helped to rebuild the police, the security services, and other institutions. All of this facilitated the provision of humanitarian aid and supported the development of the national capacity to promote and protect human rights. UNMIL also supported the government in building a functioning and credible political system. There have been three peaceful elections, and this country experienced its first democratic transition of power two months ago. Political leaders demonstrated their respect for the will of the people and the rule of law and for Liberia's institutions. This sets the stage for further progress towards sustained peace in the months and in the years ahead. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, at this important turning point, we recognize the progress that has been made, but also the challenges that remain. There is much unfinished business. Peace will not last without sustain sustainable development, and development gains will be at risk without sustained peace and respect for human rights. 
many Liberians are still waiting for the anticipated dividends of peace. They have even higher expectations after the recent elections. Some of the root causes of conflict still remain to be addressed, including poverty, youth unemployment, illiteracy, and the lack of infrastructure. We need to give Liberians back their dignity, their dreams, and faith in a better future. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the African Union's Agenda 2063 our plans to build inclusive, just, and peaceful societies on a healthy planet provide the best roadmaps to achieve this. Liberia played a leading role in ensuring the coherence between the two plans. The Sustainable Development Goals, we believe, are our best tools for conflict prevention, and I welcome the government's commitment to implement the 2030 Agenda through the new National Development Plan. The Secretary General, at the request of Member States, has proposed reforms that will enable the whole of the United Nations system to deliver coherent, comprehensive, integrated, and timely support to government's efforts. So while we close one door, we open another, another long walk to the prosperity and aspirations of the Liberian people. We look forward to further discussions on these issues during this visit, and the many more I hope will come. Tonight is a night for celebrating the achievements of peacekeeping, and of multilateral cooperation, not only in Liberia, but across West Africa. A generation ago, Liberia and Sierra Leone were in free fall. Cote d'Ivoire was embroiled in a long violent crisis. 20 years later, the closure of Amnel marks the transition of all three countries to peace and democracy. This sub-region has a bright future. It is at peace with itself and its neighbors, and it is on an upward trajectory of sustainable development and increased resilience. We will support Liberia in ensuring it builds on the gains of peace, human rights, and democracy. I would like at this point to commend Special Representative Fariz Zarif for his leadership, and particularly for the effective performance in his good office's mandate. His passion, commitment, and integrity have held true to the core values of the United Nations. And they certainly have been endorsed as, since this morning. All I have heard President Weir call him his boss. I once again pay tribute to the uniformed and civilian personnel of UNMO, past and present. I would like to also express my deep appreciation to all the national staff and look forward to exploring the opportunities of working together in development in the very near future. I would like to thank ECOWAS, the African Union, the diplomatic community, and many others who have played a part in our collective effort to support peace in Liberia. God bless the people and the government of Nigeria. But I keep wanting to say Nigeria. <laughs> and Liberia. Your Excellency, Mr. President, it is my humble honor to ask that we stand and raise our glasses as I make a toast to Liberia. President, to the peace that you have so long worked for and that we see the youth, the custodians of that peace. To national reconciliation and the deep need for all of us to find forgiveness in Liberia so that we may march on as survivors and not just victims. And last but not least, to our belief in sustainable development and the core values and promise to leave no one behind. Mr. President, I salute you. Before I start my speech, you notice that those distinguished gentlemen that came here the beautiful ladies, someone is left now, it doesn't have a name. His Excellency Paddock, I now want to give you a name. And it's a, it's a crew name, for Saska. You'll be called Sawi. So, Sabine, 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 Sab
ça me met dans le mec on new road. Since I start with new roads, I hope when you go back, you'll take up on making the road. <laughs> Fifty years ago, the first Blue Hammer landed on Fierce Shores. That road was called a fierce thing. Our people were hopeless. Constitutional governance and democracy appeared to be an unachievable goal. Fifty years later, today, Liberia is safe. Our democracy is strong. Our people are hopeful. And the United Nations mission in Liberia is successfully ending. Today, we gather with mixed emotions to make the end of a historic era as we unfold a new beginning, the presence of the United Nations mission in Liberia for almost 15 years of successfully securing peace and stability in this country will soon come to an end. Liberians are grateful for the sacrifice and support women has given us the Excellency Amina Mohammed, the Excellency Rabbi Zal Mabos, Ambassador Mohammed Chimbas, and all of Scope, we are resolute to continue the peace that you have given us. We are going to maintain this peace. We have all reasons to believe that you care and that the United Nations cares. When I was researching your specific contribution, Mr. Zari, I found something very interesting. In your report submitted to the Security Council during the just then elections, you said, and I quote, now that we are all passionately awaiting the elections and their outcome, I strongly urge candidates to call for calm amongst their supporters as the peaceful conduct of the election largely depends on their behavior. You further said, Liberians and their political leaders have a unique opportunity to prove to themselves and their friends that they are determined and able to deliver the fairest, most transparent, inclusive, and credible elections ever held in the history of Liberia. This will certainly be a great national victory for you and for all the people of Liberia, regardless of who win the election. What an inspiring report. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, those words from Amos, the Honorable Mr. Rami Zarek, inspire me to make a profound political decision to keep my supporters calm and peaceful in the interest of our country. On behalf of the Liberian people, I want to say a big thank you for being a true leader. <laughs> Liberia must Find a common ground. Let bargain be bargain and let us move our country forward. <laughs> Liberians, I want to join you to promote the pro poor agenda 
that will bring Liberia in the Committee of Nations once again. 14 years of civil crisis over. I'm asking you, our part to play is to maintain the peace that people died for. Excellency, to those families that lost their loved ones on behalf of the Liberian people, we express our deepest sympathy. May the soul rest in perfect peace. There were men and women that fought for peace and will forever remember them. May God bless the United Nations and bless Liberia as we push forward. Thank you. Peace and stability in Liberia.